Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. It's time to do my most impactful gear of the year. Hashtag bars. We're going to start off with knives this year. Last year, I just want, I did one big category and just kind of did everything all together. Let's break it down a little bit and see if I can help guide you on finding some gear that might be useful for you. This is my 10 most impactful knives of 2023. So as I mentioned before, impactful, meaning that doesn't mean that's necessarily a positive thing. You can be impactful and be completely trash at your goal, at your mission, at what you set out to do as a knife maker, as a brand, whether you're small batch, your production, you've been doing this for years, or this is your first rodeo. There's a possibility that both of those things could happen. These knives kind of brought me to a head. They kind of brought me to a place where I began to realize the things I will and will not tolerate in a knife for my daily carry. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is because you may not be in the same place that I am. I'm fortunate to have knives that are gifted to me, given to me because I do YouTube or whatever. And you may be really just coming down to selecting just a couple of knives that work for you. I want to help guide you through that just in case these might be influential. So I'm going to just let you know what did and did not work for each knife. I'll also let you know if I got the knife for free. Was it given to me by the company or was it, you know, uh, if it was a gift from like a loved one, that doesn't really count. But if it was given to me by a company, I'll let you know as well. So we got to start off with the V Knives Poseidon. This is an interesting knife. This is a 154 CM liner lock titanium handled knife that seems to be trying to do more than it's capable of. I'm not a steel snob. 154 CM is completely sufficient for everyday carry type of tasks. There's a lot of things about the knife that seem to be okay. First off, just a couple of specs. Blade length is about 3.5 inches. It does have titanium scales. It has a freaking really unique looking scales on it. It does give you vibes of like Poseidon, like the, it was it the Greek God or was he a Roman God or whatever, like Poseidon in like the ocean. It gives you those type of vibes, especially with the hardware and the pivot screw and the thumb stud and all that type of stuff. It's a very, very slick looking knife. It is very designed specifically for utility. Everyday carry has a hollow grind and it's decent to carry into the pocket. What did this knife make me realize? This knife made me realize that titanium scales don't matter. They weigh down in the pocket. They don't necessarily provide much more beneficial benefits other than I understand it's antimicrobial and depending on how the titanium blades are done or the scales are done, you might have a little bit better grip. But I owned uh, finally this year, I got a couple of knives. I started using knives more that had titanium scales. And I realized that those are the last knives in my EDC toolbox that I pick up and I use because of the scales themselves. So this was impactful because it made me realize that if I lost all my titanium scale knives, I would not lose a wink of sleep. And mostly because, you know, I understand that I do YouTube, so I'm, I should probably keep one or two uh, titanium scaled knives on me altogether. But if you don't do this and if unless you just want it for that luxury type of feel, I can't I just don't necessarily recommend putting titanium scales on your knives now. Let's just keep it real. You're going to see in the future me having type of scales on my knives. I might even upgrade one of my bench mates with a little bit. I say upgrade, but put titanium scales on there just because I might want to see what that feels like. But is it a requirement? It is not. That brings me up to the next knife, which is also not a requirement, but it made me realize that I like a little bit of funk in my life. I like a, a knife with a little bit of backside, a little chunky little boy here. This is the O Knife Heron L1. This is in the G10 my, uh, scales. These specifically are in green color. You can also get it in black D2 steel knife with a thumb hole which is super fun to use, a warning type of knife, has a compound grind on this thing. This is a fun knife to use. It's a big chunky knife. It's a good talking piece. Is it good at everything? No. If you're going to be doing an intense cut, a very it doesn't necessarily get through that very easily, although that normally warnings are really good at exposing themselves for those type of utility type of cuts, but maybe not necessarily this one. Cutting through like 
soft materials such as cloth and rope. This is not as precise if they unless they would have added like a partially serrated blade on here. But this made me realize that I like a chunky boy in my life. Now, I don't think I'm going to like multiple of them. I, I you know, I would not necessarily recommend that you go out, go out there and spend a ton of money on a big chunky boy or anything like that. But this is a fun knife to have. I like the flipper. I like the thumb hole. Full disclosure, Olight or O Knife sent this out to me for free, so I didn't pay for this. But even if I did, you can normally find this thing for less than 60 bucks more often than not. The next knife is by TRM Three Rivers Manufacturing. This is called the Shadow. The show side has these black G10 scales, which are machined and they look freak CNC machined. They look freaking fantastic. The other side has same G10 scales, except they're black. So I guess it's casting a shadow on the one side has titanium accents with the pocket clip. Great looking knife. It has the CPM 20 CV steel on this thing, which is powdered metal. I love this knife. You know what this knife told me this year is that when a company, a USA made company shifts gears and starts to put their focus on things that they know how to do really, really well into another line, they can make some premium stuff. So TRM started off initially, they provide a lot of titanium to different manufacturers, especially a lot of pocket knife companies and stuff like that. So they're very much known for providing high quality titanium, whatever the grade of titaniums are, they're known for stuff like that. They dip their toes in knife making. Full disclosure, they sent this specific knife out to me. And I didn't think that I can appreciate an Axis style lock. Obviously, the Axis style is patented by Benchmade. That patent has expired. This one specifically, they call it the River Lock. It is a great knife. It feels good in the hand. It's a pricey boy. But this made me realize that this is what an American-made pricey knife should feel like. This turns circles around bench made knives it feels so good to use you can tell that each one of these are actually checked out by a person so like the name bench made is it, it lets it, it gives you the feeling that each knife is being made at a bench or each knife is being handled and checked by a person they're not i've gotten a couple of bench maids that the knives didn't come in centered they weren't that great the access lock didn't work correctly and this is not that. It's just a fantastic knife to use. It's a pricey boy. But this is one of those knives that made me realize if I'm going to spend some big bucks on a knife, this is something that I might consider doing. This thing is basically, let's call it a $295 knife, a $300 knife. Let's just keep it real. And what are you getting for 300 bucks? Is it significantly more than spending 99 bucks on a Benchmade Griptilian, mini Griptilian, which is what I did. I spent, actually, I spent $89 on a Benchmade Mini Griptilian, S30V steel, all that good stuff. This is a better grade of steel, more corrosion resistance, all that good stuff. You are getting those subtle touches. If you're gonna get a one and done, buy once, cry once type of, type of knife, this is the type of knife that I could buy and give to my sons. It just feels that good. The next knife kind of gives me those same heebie-jeebies. This is the Remit EDC pocket knife, specifically the Rhino. This is a button lock knife but it also has a front flipper a thumb stud so lots of options to engage this knife but you know what this made me realize that for around 50 bucks you can get multiple options to open a knife it's going to come from some chinese made company completely different from the trm knife but it feels like you got all 50 dollars worth of knife in your hands they went a completely different way with the actual way that you could run a lanyard by putting it back here instead of running a, a actual th a hole for a lanyard hole. And it, it's just a, the micarta scales are already starting to grab their own type of pat uh, patina on it. You can get it in multiple colors. It oftentimes does fall be uh, below the $40 mark, but even at $49.50, which is normally what this thing is priced, this is a great little knife. It's not ambidextrous. You're not gonna be able to use it very easily if you're a lefty but you know what it does have the front flipper so maybe you'll feel comfortable with that you can use the thumb studs it's double studded now on the complete end and the opposite pole uh, of the totem pole you have the ozark trail by walmart 
This knife has absolutely no details to it. I, I think it's some type of plastic scales on there and it doesn't even tell you what blade seal it is. It doesn't tell you on their website. It doesn't tell you on the blade itself. So it might be the most budget steel they made, maybe like a AUS, AUS uh, 10 or something even like that. And it does have like a crossbar style of lock and it seems to actually work pretty well to be a Walmart knife. Double studded, um, it's not ambidextrous, so you can't turn your pocket clip around, but you know what it is? It's $6. It's a $6 knife. And this knife made me realize that if these large manufacturers are able to really put their minds to it and they're able to really kind of button down and to try to get into different games, this is the type of knife that can make it happen. And it's less than $10. And I didn't think that would be something that would be feasible before until I got my hands on this. Another thing that I thought was a fantastic thing this year was Topps Knives Mini Scandi Folder. This is the MSF-G. And the G just stands for G10 Scales. I will say this. The Mini Scandi initially started off as a neck knife. And... It was a hit for Top Snodge. So they decided to make it into a folder version. I think before it had Micarta scales, they went with G10 for this one. It's actually very nice. It has a titanium pocket clip, which is reversible at the top there, which is some unique looking stuff. It's a flipper. They dropped the actual drop point and they went with a clip point style of blade, which is for me personally, when I'm using it for uh, within my kill kit or using it out in the field, I prefer this a little bit more. I feel like the, the tip of the blade is a little bit more accessible. Liner lock, it's a, it's a decent knife. But you know what this made me realize? That having LMAX, as this knife does, having those top-end, high-end blade steels doesn't matter. It, it does not matter. What does matter is the accessibility of the blade itself. This clip point is fantastic. The type of grind that it has, more of a flat type grind on this thing. And the subtle touches when it comes to the actual knife itself. I love the way that this pocket clip is very, very keen to actually hold on to your, to your pocket and it doesn't find its way out. I love the actual milling on these scales because when you do have like sweaty hands or if you have blood on your hands, you can still grip this knife. This knife made me realize that if this was something else, if this was a D2, I would probably be okay with that. Maybe an S30V or whichever one provides more corrosion resistance. If I'm out for my kill kit, you guys let me know in the comments. I would probably be okay with that. It feels premium. It's less than 200 bucks. I do wish it had one additional way to deploy it. Maybe if it had a thumb stud or a front flipper instead of a rear, it just, you know, it kind of feels a little boring and it's okay to feel boring. You know what the Gerber gear assert made me realize this year that this glass field uh, nylon scaled lightweight, this is actually lighter than the Benchmade bug out, or maybe it's like 0 0.01 ounces more than the Benchmade bug out S 30 V steel telescoping thumb stud so if you don't like where it is you can actually loosen it up and um, move it up and down as you see fit decent pocket clip ambidextrous so you can carry it on both sides unique looking lanyard hole love the little texturing on the scales that this knife made me realize you can try too damn hard this steel and this is the second one that i've had because the first one gerber saw my video on the first one they sent me out another one it still just makes me realize that you can put all the unique features you want on the knife when you're trying to swing in a, in a specific league. This knife is obviously chasing after the Benchmade bug out. S30V steel, it's super lightweight. You can tell they're going for the bug out. And I've had issues with these knives since I got them. I just don't, I don't like the assert. And I also don't like the freaking price. $180 MSRP on this thing. I think I initially got it with the, with the military discount for like $112. $112 is a little bit more digestible. Now, if you work this up a little bit more, I guess it could be better, but I don't want to have to flip my wrist this much to open a crossbar axis style of knife. And that's what this knife makes me realize that. And I've heard a lot of complaints from others as well that Gerber tried hard. This is a try hard type of knife where you're really trying to go at the, the jugular of your competitor 
and you didn't make it happen. Not the best thing out the box for you, Gerber, but you know, I've been shitting on your knives for years, so that kind of makes life a little bit easier. Next one here is the Tecto F2 Bravo. This is a D2, a D2 steel folding knife, drop point style blade, a fine edge, plain edge knife. You know what this knife made me realize? I like forged ember. I like a little bit of more to my carbon fiber than just the normal carbon fiber that a lot of these companies are doing. The detailing on this looks so freaking good. Like it just looks fantastic. I love like the forged carbon on there, the, the different accents. It does have titanium accents on here. The pocket clip, you know, the, the hardware looks fantastic. It does have that flipper in the back. It's so thin. This is the type of knife you can wear while you're in dress clothes. And because of the scales, it doesn't feel aggressive to people at a ball or a banquet or at work. This is a knife that made me realize that all these companies that are coming out with this style of slim knife, whether it is Tecto, CRKT, CRJB, and plenty of others that are coming out with these knives. I didn't really look at them very, very much. Tecto sent this out to me, full disclosure, and I kind of fell in love with it, not for my pocket, but to stick in a secondary knife, stick it in my backup pouch and realize that, man, I can't wait to get that thing back in my hand. And then we have the Civivi Elementum in autumn. This made me realize that if a company's willing to pay, and I think the Saudi Arabians own the actual trademark for the word autumn. So the material is not autumn. Autumn is the brand name, but I forget what the actual material is. But if you're willing to pay for the licensing fee to use the name autumn on your material, it makes me realize that companies are willing to go with the fad. Right now, the fad is autumn, the CDC and the actual donut looking, cotton candy looking type of stuff. This made me realize that fads are hitting the EDC community hard because it does look cool. But the functionality that Autumn brings you in an industrial environment, I don't know if that's needed in your pocket. For disclosure, Civivi sent this out to me. And if they wouldn't have sent this out to me, I probably wouldn't own an Autumn knife. I think that's the, the easy conclusion. I love the Elementum. Um, I like the button lock a little bit version a little bit more. This one here is just a flipper version. I recommend this all the time to people, but I normally just recommend the normal F Elementum, if you want to get it in maybe a copper or some G10 scales, spend less than 50 bucks. That would be the way I would go. But this just made me realize that Autumn's a fad. And I can just really see by the end of 2024, a lot of people aren't going to be talking about Autumn very much anymore, especially with companies like Civivi and We Knife. You know, they pumped out like four of these models this year the Mini Praxis, the Praxis, the, the, the Elementum, and like two or three different versions. And it, I think it's going to fade away faster than we can imagine. D2 still on this thing. Nothing super unique to write home to mom about. We, it kind of brings me to my one and only most impactful fixed blade knife for 2023. This is the Montana Knife Company Blackfoot in orange and black specifically. And this one here is the Magna Cut. And I did not realize how viable it was for me to actually EDC a fixed blade knife until I got my hands on the Magna Cut Blackfoot by Montana Knife Company, MKC for sure. Overall length of this thing is 7.75 inches. The blade is seven is 3.5 inches. It's very comparable to like a normal folding pocket knife, but now you got a lot of full tang goodness in your pocket. This has a God tier actual sheath a kodak sheath on it that you can wear on your belt you can turn it around and actually put it in your pocket if you saw fit but i could not believe how much i enjoyed this thing the whole thing weighs 3.6 ounces so it weighs less than this big old chunky boy here that we talked about earlier so imagine and it's actually about the same length i think it's even shorter you got shorter than this big old o knife Let's check it out next to like the TRM. So it's about the same length as the TRM. One thing I've realized about this is that it is a viable option for me to EDC a fixed blade knife. And I say that after having EDC the fixed blade knife with the SE Kanduru, 
with the top snides ferret i've done it before but they all kind of got like and eh, they didn't feel as capable as my folders i felt like i was missing out i put this in the pocket for almost a month it was hard to peel myself away from it i did the review i stuck it in my drawer and i've missed it ever since mkc did send this out to me they sent two blades out to me super sharp but even though it's magna cut because of the way that they actually handled the actual grind on this you can actually sharpen this yourselves it's completely doable it's accessible it's a great knife razor sharp out the box and the sheath is god tier it gives you a nice snappy sound let you know that you've actually put it back in and that it's not going to wiggle out on you so that's the fixed blade knife that almost made me realize that I could get away from a folder. These make me realize that when companies try or don't try, I realize it. I notice it. Comment down below. I would love to know what do you think about the 10 that I presented? Would you have tried something else? Do you own any of these knives? Are you interested in any of them? Check the links down below and see if any of them are available or whatnot. And I would love to know your comments as well. Hit that subscribe button if this is your first time. Join the battalion. We would love to have you here. If this is not your first time, then thank you once again for stopping by watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.